the bell icon to turn on notifications. So now that we've seen how to create a pivot table using recommended pivot tables, let's take a look at how we create one from scratch. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Now, one of the methods you can use is pretty much what we did in the last lesson. We can click in our data, in our table in this case, jump up to the insert ribbon, and in that first group, we have an option for pivot table. Now, if we click this, it's gonna take us to the create pivot table dialog box. And there's a couple of things that we need to check in here before proceeding. So the first thing you'll see in here is it says, choose the data that you want to analyze. And then we have a couple of different options. We have select a table or range or use an external data source. We also have a third option here, which is currently grayed out. So it's not available to me of use this workbooks data model. Now notice the first option here has automatically been selected for me by Excel. And if you notice underneath, it says table range, and then it says sales data. Now, because I was clicked in my Excel table data, when I clicked on the pivot table button, Excel has assumed that the data that I want to use in my pivot table is basically everything that surrounds where I'm clicked. And because we named that table sales data, it's picked up the sales data table. So in this case, this is exactly what we want to use. However, before we move on, let's just explore this second option of use an external data source. Now you would use this option if maybe you have data stored somewhere else, so outside of this particular workbook. So you might have that data stored in an access table, or maybe you have it stored in just another Excel file. If that is the case, if you want to use that data in your pivot table, you can click on choose connection, browse for more at the bottom and it's going to open up your local drives and you can go in and select the file that you want to import. So that is what that second option is all about. Now we're going to use the first option because we want to use this table data. The next thing that we have to tell Excel is where we want this pivot table report to be placed. And again, we have three different options. We can choose to put our pivot table on a brand new worksheet. We can choose to add it to an existing worksheet. And if I was to select this option, underneath it says location, and this is going to allow me to basically select a specific worksheet in my workbook. Now I only have one worksheet and that is called sales data. But if I had another one listed down here, I could choose to place that data on that particular worksheet. I could even choose to put my pivot table on the sales data worksheet. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. It's always good to get into the habit of separating out your data from your analysis. So always have your raw data set, your source data on a different worksheet to your pivot tables and your pivot charts. So in general, the option that I tend to select here is new worksheet. Now, once again, there is a third option where we can choose to add this data to the data model. Now, again, because this is a beginner's course, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole, but this option here basically allows you to combine different data sets into one. So if I had four Excel tables containing data, I could add them all to the data model and then create pivot tables based off of that. But for the time being, we're going to stick with new worksheet. Let's click on OK. Now notice at the bottom straight away, Excel has created me a brand new worksheet. It's called Sheet 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this worksheet to the right hand side of my data source just for readability. So I just need to click and drag and drop to do that. What I'm also going to do is rename this worksheet. So let's right click, rename, and I'm going to call this, let's just call it pivot table for now so that we don't get confused. We can always come back at a later stage and make that more meaningful once we know what our pivot table is going to contain. And what you're looking at on this worksheet is basically a blank pivot table report. You can see over here, we just have this sort of little rectangle that says pivot table 13 to build a report, choose fields from the pivot table field list. And over on the right hand side, you can see the pivot table field list. And I'm going to talk to you a bit more about exactly what this is in the next lesson. But that is kind of how you get started creating your pivot table.
Now what I want to do here is just show you another method that you can use. So I'm going to right click and let's just delete out this worksheet and go back to our data source. Now instead of going to the insert ribbon, you can also create a pivot table from the table design ribbon. And you'll notice here in the tools group, we have summarize with pivot table. And this is basically going to take you to exactly the same create pivot table dialog box. So once again, I want to use this sales data table range and I want to place it on a new worksheet. So all I need to do is click on OK and I have exactly the same thing. I can move my worksheet, right click and rename this pivot table and hit enter. So very straightforward and simple to start creating your pivot table from your Excel table data. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.